Okay, so I would say out of the out of the stuff in year twelve mechanics, this is this is the most mechanicsy thing that we do. Okay, the other stuff we've done so far. The other stuff we've done so far has actually just been Suvat equations um, and variable acceleration. We haven't really done anything that has felt like different to maths, really. It's just felt like an application of it. This, this though, is where things start to feel a little bit different to maths. And I absolutely love mechanics. It's my favorite, favorite part that we look at in maths. And we're going to be spending the next few lessons thinking about things to do with forces. And basically, forces are just how we want to make things move. How do things move, or how do things interact in, in the real world, OK? And um, we're going to be doing a little bit of jumping between things to do with forces, and then we'll be looking at some vectors, things to do with forces, things to do with vectors. And then at the end, we kind of um, make it its most complicated kind of bit. But, uh, but it's, it's a, good, a really, really good topic, OK? So to begin with, we'll be thinking about force diagrams and common forces. Now, I don't expect you, by the end of a couple of slides, for you to understand how to fully do a force diagram. But there's a bit of it now. There'll be a bit later. There'll be a bit more. And we're going to constantly like, be thinking about the best way of drawing force diagrams that we have here. So what we do for a force diagram is we consider the forces acting on each object one at, an, one at a time. We don't try and draw all of the forces of everything all at once because there's just too many things to consider. So when I consider the forces that are acting on me right now, I think about my weight and I think about on my feet, I can feel something pushing against my feet, which is actually really weird. You're all like sat down on a chair. You can all feel your chair pushing against you. If you're so used to it, you don't even really realize it's there. But if you stop and think for a second, you can feel the surface of the chair pushing into you. And if it wasn't pushing into you, you would be free falling to, to the ground. OK? So the different forces that we've got, just to kind of point out a couple of these things that seem painfully obvious. But when we draw a force diagram, I would say like 95% of the time, the arrows should be coming out of the box. Even if you feel like someone is pushing something into the box, you would still draw the arrow coming out of the box. So let's say I had a box here and I was pushing it in this direction. Actually, the best way that we would draw that is we would talk about what the box would be feeling. The box would feel a force going to the right. So we always want to try and aim to draw the forces coming out of the box. That's one of the things that I wanted to mention on this first page. There are then a few forces here that I wanted to, to mention, OK? First of all, there is the weight of the block in this particular instance. And we've got this block here. Everything, if it's on a place with gravity, will feel weight. This is going to sound very, very silly, but weight obviously goes vertically downwards. Even if you're on a slope or tilted, weight is always going to go vertically downwards. Your weight will never go off at some random angle because gravity always pulls you straight down. Um, this P force that I've written here, we use various letters for this. It just happens to be P in this diagram. I've got a force which is pulling the block. Um, when it's a string or a cable involved, this becomes tension. So instead of it being like a pull force or possibly even a push force that's pushing it to the right, if it was a piece of string that was pulling it along, we use the letter T for tension there. Tension is how like, much force there is contained inside a string. Um, I've then got this letter F here. F is used an awful lot in mechanics because it seems to mean force, friction. So it's quite confusing. It doesn't always mean one thing. So please don't think when you see the letter F that it means something in particular right now. So this force going to the left is the resistances to motion. In this case, it's the friction between the block and the plane. So if you imagine that you were this block and someone was pushing you along, you would feel on the surface of whatever it was touching the table something that was kind of resisting going in the other direction. That's what you would feel, <coughs> that friction force. Last of all, there's this reaction force here, which is the plane on the block, and it's resisting the block sinking into the plane. Now, that's the force that I've just, decide, I've just described to you, is what is from my feet when I stand on the floor here. I can actually feel a force which is going from the floor and pushing me upwards. And I can also feel the weight going down. The force that you can feel that's pushing you upwards is what we call the reaction force of the chair on your backside, pushing you upwards. Obviously, it's not pushing you up any higher than pushing you down. Otherwise, you'd be flying upwards, which wouldn't make much sense. Sometimes we call this reaction force a normal reaction. 
Any idea why we might be using the word normal for this? No, it's not normal in the sense of like how we use normal in like regular conversation. What does normal mean in maths? It means perpendicular. So it's actually like a perpendicular reaction. If you look at the surface that we've got here and the reaction force, they're actually perpendicular to the surface, okay? And what we will often be doing here is modeling objects as a particle. So that means that we will, it's a, part, it's a point with negligible dimensions. It means we're not bothered about whether we're modeling a truck or a box, whatever it is, we're just gonna pretend that it's like a, a small point. And in this particular case, we're just pretending we're gonna draw it as a box diagram that we've got here, okay? There are a few other things that I need to tell you about to begin with. So weight is uh, the mass times by g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity, which we've already come across that g is 9.8. Um, and so w, therefore, is equal to mg, and weight acts vertically downwards, obviously. Now, that's the, mis the distinction that people get a bit confused with. I know you've probably seen this in GCSE before, but when we talk about weight, we are talking about something different to mass, okay? The mass of something might be two kilograms, but its weight must be a force, which is it's something that's in newtons. Now, the thing that's confusing about this is when you say to someone, or the doctor says to you, how much do you weigh? You actually answer the question by giving them your mass. You say like 70 kilograms, 60 kilograms, whatever you say. But that's not what the weight is. The weight is the mass multiplied by G. Okay, and we'll do some examples with this later on. G is sometimes 10, some, but most of the time we'll call it as 9.8. So I'm just going to read this out again, although this is some similar things we've said here. The normal reaction, which is sometimes called the contact force or the reaction force, is the force which acts on a box or particle from the surface that it is on. It's called a normal reaction because it acts perpendicular to the surface. And it's called a normal reaction because it has reacted to the forces in the opposing direction. Just like the feeling that you've got on your chair, the chair is reacting to your weight on the chair. That's why it's a normal reaction. Um, so we use the letter R for the normal reaction most of the time. Sometimes when we go through to year 13 and we have multiple normal reactions, we may use the letter N as well. So I've just got two diagrams that I've got drawn here, and I'm just trying to illustrate the point about a couple of things. So this one has a two kilogram mass, so its weight, the force that is dragging it down, is two G, two multiplied by G, but we just write it as two G. And obviously it's got a normal reaction which is perpendicular to the surface. However, if we had a box and it was sat on an inclined surface, in other words, if it was on a, a table that someone had lifted one end up and it was going to slide down the table, you should notice that the normal reaction is perpendicular to the surface that it's on. Okay, It should always be perpendicular to the surface that something is on. And the other thing that you should notice here is that the weight is going vertically downwards. Okay, the weight is going vertically downwards because that's the way that gravity acts. It would be very, very bizarre if the weight was coming over at this angle. It would be like you feeling like your weight, you were like getting dragged over to one side just by your weight, okay? So we are gonna do so much more on this. So if you're feeling a bit like, oh my gosh, I'm a bit overwhelmed by some of these ideas, we're gonna do so much, over, so much on this over the next few lessons that your understanding will be built up slowly as well. So I've said here, let's consider the forces acting on a body suspended from a light, inextensible string. OK, so first of all, I'm going to draw a body, which is always creatively in, in mechanics is just going to be a block. And for a moment, I literally want you to imagine that you are a block and you've got a piece of string coming out the top of your head and you are just hanging there. And I want you to imagine what it feels like other than being a the existential crisis of being a block, but what does it feel like? <laughs> so what is it, tell me what it feels like if you're that block hanging there. Like what, does, what kind of things do you feel? <laughs> a sense of nothingness. But what kind of things like do you feel, like what forces do you feel on you? You feel the string pulling you up. So this is the string that is pulling you up and you feel the gravity pulling you down. So if the mass is m, then your weight that would be pulling you down is mg. 
Because sometimes people get confused about what direction these forces should be going in, like what direction should the tension be going in. But if you are the block, you feel at the top of your head, you feel something pulling you up, and you feel your weight that is pulling you down. If you're not moving, you can probably have a pretty good guess. What can you tell me about these two forces if you're just hanging there? The forces have got to be the same as each other, right? It kind of makes sense. If the forces are the same and everything is balanced, we get a sense of the word balance, meaning not moving in equilibrium, which is a word that we'll be using a lot more in a second, OK? So here is Newton. Who is Newton? What's his first name? Does anyone know? Isaac, Isaac Newton, very, very famous mathematician, English mathematician and philosopher. He kind of did a bit of everything. He wasn't just a mathematician. So this is called classical mechanics, OK? You don't need to know all of these bits. But classical mechanics, these are like the classical laws that things obey. I'm not sure if this is in GCSE, but we'll recap it anyway. So the first law of motion, there are three laws of motion. Shh, shh, shh. Pardon? The first two are linked. Did you say? Ah, but the third one isn't. OK. So the first law of motion says that an object at rest will stay at rest. And that if an object is moving with constant velocity, it will remain at that velocity unless an unbalanced force acts on the object. So in other words, what this is saying is if the object is not accelerating, the forces are balanced in every direction. Forces up equal forces down and forces left equal forces right. So if something is not accelerating, then the forces must be balanced. Not accelerating can mean two things, though. What are the two things not accelerating could mean? Decelerating. decelerating is still decelerating. So it could be at rest is one of them if it's not accelerating. And constant speed. So that's what it actually says here. It says it's either at rest or it's got constant velocity. So those two scenarios are not accelerating. They are where the forces up equal the forces down and the forces left equal the forces right. But before we do that, we're going to try and find out whether something, uh, what resultant forces are, OK, for things that are not going to stay at rest or they're going to be something a little bit different. So I've got a force diagram here. And this force diagram, you can either imagine this as a bird's eye view or you can imagine it as a side on view. It doesn't really matter. But let's imagine it as perhaps a bird's eye view in this case, just because we've got some random forces that have been drawn. Inside the orange box here, I've said that the resultant force is the overall force that is acting on the object. An object will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force. If there is no, if all the forces are balanced, it won't accelerate. If there's an imbalance, it's going to accelerate in that direction. So just a little bit about notation that we've got here. This R with an arrow in it, we use it to resolve the forces in a particular direction. This is the notation that you would expect in an exam. The word resolve means what I'm about to do here. So if I resolve in the upwards direction, so I've got something that's going 40 up, but it's going 5 downwards, the overall force that we would say going in the upwards direction is what? It's 35. We're thinking about the forces which are going upwards and the force which is opposing it is going in the opposite direction is 5. So we just end up with it's 35 newtons in the upwards direction. Left and right, though, the overall force is 0 because you've got 30 minus 30, if we're looking at to the right, which is just 0. So in the left and right direction, the forces are completely balanced. What I'm going to do with this second diagram that I've got down here is I'm now going to draw on the resultant force to try and predict what will happen. So there is no resultant force left and right because when I do 30 take away 30, I get 0. But when I do the 40 take away 5, overall, it has an upwards force of 35. So the particle will accelerate upwards, or upwards according to our diagram. So it just, it's almost a bit like, I think of these questions as a bit like a tug of war. Like if there was a tug of war in the left and right direction, it would be a draw. If there was a tug of war in the up and down direction, it would be overall 35 in that upwards direction. OK? Can I go on to the next bit? Yeah. So you can have then things where there are some unknowns in it instead. 
So I'm being asked in this case, first of all, to resolve it, and we're going to consider upwards to begin with. Well, I've got upwards 5, downwards 5. So if I found out which of those was um, what the result would be, I get 0. And if I go to the right, well, I've got a P force that's over here, and going opposite to it is 3. So it's going to be P minus 3. It would, if I was resolving it in that direction, I would get 3 minus p. So on the diagram, I'm not going to have anything in the up and down direction, because in the up and down direction, it's 0. But coming out to the right, I've got that it's p minus 3. Now, if I was drawing it coming out to the left, Arifal, I would have 3 minus p. And you only need to think about, I don't know, if p was 10 you would have 7 to the right. But if p was 10 here, you'd have minus 7, and the minus 7 would indicate the arrow is in the wrong direction and should be coming out to the right instead. Okay. Now, I grabbed these images from somewhere else. I don't usually write the Newtons on the diagram. The N stands for Newtons, which is the size of the force. It's the unit. Okay. I don't usually write Newtons on diagrams, so you don't need to do them. If you want to, I would actually probably recommend against it because I think it gets more confusing the more information that there is. OK, so we've got a couple of different options here. If I was going to resolve this one in the downwards direction, what should my statement be for resolving it in the downwards direction to mean? 6 minus 4, which is 2. And if I was going to resolve it to the left? 7 minus 5. Good, 7 minus 5, which is 7 minus 2 minus 3, because they're both in the opposite direction. 7 minus 5 is 2, which tells me on the diagram that I've got 2 overall in the downwards direction, 2 overall in the leftwards direction. So where is this particle going to move, do you think? Or which direction do you think it's going to move? Yeah, it's going to go diagonally downwards. If you imagine pulling something to the left and pulling something to the downwards, overall, it's going to go there. And what were you just saying? Pythagoras. Pythagoras. You're going to do Pythagoras to find out what the overall force was. We're not even going to do that for a few lessons' time, OK? But you would do 2 squared plus 2 squared square rooted. Any predictions on what this angle here is? 45, because it's equal forces here. So again, it's going to be Pythagoras and Sokotoa trigonometry to find out all of these different kinds of things. We basically know what's going to happen in this topic, OK? Now, the only thing I wanted to show down here is if you resolved it in the other direction. So if I did up, I would have 4 take away 6 which is minus 2. Well, instead of it being up minus 2, I'm going to draw it as down 2. So you can draw it down. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, I just wanted to show you, you can do it in different directions. If you get a negative answer, it just shows you it's probably in the other direction. And if I resolved it to the right, I would get 2 plus 3 minus 7, which is minus 2. So it's saying it's minus 2 to the right. Well, that's just, minus, that's just 2 to the left, isn't it? So I'm going to ask you to try these two here, um, and then you've got two more sets of questions that you've got over here, OK? So I'm going to leave these ones. You can decide which way you want to resolve them, whether you want to do them to the right or the left. Try and do it so you get a positive answer, um, and then we'll see how those go in just a second, OK?